brows, I'll be sure you get things. Yeah, see what I did there? Slip and slide on the body until she get there. I can't lie when I watch my baby. Her lip gloss pop just came from the spa. Hair done too, but girl, that was for shots to go. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Head Cracks Hip Hop Spot. And I don't know why I'm saying it this way. It's because I'm chilling with one of the most mellowest dudes in the game right now who's killing it, the homie Sebastian Michael. Yo, Yo. man, you got one of the hottest records in the country right Thank now, you, man. man. I appreciate that, man. I love that introduction, though, man. I'm always cracking up, bro. That was dope. I like that. Yo, That's man, <laughs> I was doing my research on you, man. In addition to, like, not yeah. knowing that it was your record that I was liking for quite some time, sure. you got an interesting backstory, man. Like, so let me get this right. You're Ethiopian mm -hmm. and part Swedish. Yeah. Like, your mom, man. your mom's a Swedish, right? No, my mom's Ethiopian. My dad is Swedish, so. All right, so your pops yeah. must have had some A-level game. The to, you know what I'm saying? Like, the roll, the roll over there and pull an Ethiopian <laughs> chick in Sweden? Stop playing. Yeah, that's hilarious. I don't know. I never thought of it that way, you know what I mean? But I don't know. I can't even answer that. So you, you spent <laughs> a good portion of your life growing up in Sweden, right? Yeah. I'm born and raised out there. I came when I was 18. So, gotcha. Yeah, I've been over for like six years. Now, do you miss it? I mean... You know, I miss I miss family. You know what I mean. That's like you know the, that's the reason why I go back to Sweden. I have I also work with a few producers out there, but mainly you know I have a lot of my family out there, most of my family. So that's that's what I miss. You know, as far as the country, you know, it's you know, honestly I can't say that I really miss the country. I honestly like it over here better. You know what I mean? A little bit more to do over here. A little bit a more lot energy. More to do over here. Yeah, I got you. Definitely. Now you left Sweden and lived in California for like two years, where you yeah. studied like sound engineering. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So like, so do you mix your own records? Uh well, to be honest, I'm trying to stay stay away from that, man. Like, just I, working I on artists drive me crazy. Yeah, it's too much to do. Like, if I had to focus on every single thing, it would be just overwhelming, you know. But um, I started out like I just, you know, my excuse was always like, yeah, you know, I'm an artist, a lot, a lot, but. I, I'm trying to find someone who can like record me. I'm trying to find a studio, la la, you know. So I just stopped, you know, having that excuse and just learned how to engineer myself in school for it. And then I just started recording myself. So most of the songs that that we started doing was I just cut myself, you know, doing it. And See, man, just a little bit of like ingenuity and just self know how, man, takes yeah, you such a long just, way. It just helped me get a start, you know what I mean, doing that, you know. And plus, like, I made some money on the side going and engineering from other people and stuff, you know. See, hustle. Yeah. Hustle, yeah, that man. Swedish yeah. hustle. <laughs> so you go from California yeah. to Boston, mm -hmm. which seems like, you know, like, I mean, it seems like, you know, you go from Sweden, which is dope because, like, yeah. especially if you ain't never been to Sweden, right. like, you just want to go because you hear all these stories about these tall blonde chicks and you're like, yo, what's yeah. really good in Sweden? Uh -huh. Then you go to Cali, which is like the dream right. of, you Makes know, sense. then you go to Boston. And I'm not dissing Does Boston. Not Boston's a sense. great place. <laughs> so how did you end up in Boston from California? I feel you, man. Like people, people looking at me like, you moved from LA to Boston. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why did you do that? But, I mean, to be honest, I, I felt like being in LA early on, it's a little, it's a little crazy. If you don't have, I felt like if you don't have, uh, you know, um, basically grounded people over there, you, you know, if you don't have something set over there, it's gonna be hard to kind of like, you know what I mean? Build a. Um, I mean, get a start, basically. Right, because there's so many I mean? people trying to do the so same thing. So many people trying to do it, and, and you know, and you got to know the right people, you know what I mean? Because no offense to L.A., but everybody knows it's like, you know, it's a lot of, you know, gazy people out there. It's a lot of fake people that tell you certain things, and, and that happened to me. That's why I know it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But Boston, to me, was like, I, you know, I got into a school over at Car Berkeley, which was honestly the, the main reason for me to move over there. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even have known like what, where Boston was at, you know, if it wasn't for Berkeley, you know what I mean? So, but moving to to um, Boston, I got my start over there. Wow. You know what I mean? Like they started supporting me a lot, like different colleges in Boston and stuff like that. So. I look at Boston like my second home because, you know, that was like my, my start, you know? That's what's up. Now, when yeah. you go to a school like Berkeley, are you going for, like, music? Or are you going for, like, business management or? At Berkeley? Yeah. Uh, man, I went for, I, you know, I actually did a major uh, called Pro Music where you, like, could do everything you wanted. I couldn't decide what I wanted to do, so I just, they had a major. It was like, okay, you can put together different majors in, into one major, you know what I mean? And, and just do different things. So that's what I did, man. People call me lazy to do that because, you know, 
the, the known people to do that are the lazy people because they don't want to get into one thing. Yeah, so, you don't want to commit to one thing. Yeah, you know, but uh, it was cool because, you know, the main thing, the main reason why I loved Berkeley was the networking, you know what I mean, being in that environment. And what I did was, like, I went to school, but then right after school, I would go home and cut and record and, like, you know what I mean, do what I wanted to really do, you know what I'm now, saying? Now, is he perfect for a person, like, you know, in your industry because, like, yeah. you're immersed in the thing that you want to do more than anything almost yeah. all day, like... I right. wish I, my assignment was to go home and work on a record. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, definitely was. But, you know, I, it's crazy because, you know, I'm, I'm in school for music, but they want me to do other things. You know what I'm saying? Music-wise. And, and I knew what I wanted to do, so I kind of had to balance those two things. So it was kind of like having a 9-to-5 job and then do music after, you know, don't work. After work, work, yeah. yeah. You know? Yo, I mean, and it seems like everything kind of came together with yeah. you kind of fast. You know, like some yeah. people like, you know, chase this dream their whole life. But like, you know, here we are in 2014. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with Slip and Slide. Yeah. You got a record that uh, not is only like getting a lot of love, like on terrestrial radio, satellite yeah. radio as well. Yeah. Of course, you're joining on uh, Love and Hip Hop uh, on yeah. the episode where, uh, where Joe Buttons was going to propose to Tahiri. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like, I mean, so like that first time mm -hmm. you hear your song on the radio, you know what I'm saying? Like, how do you react? I remember, you know, clearly too, because like we was in Miami. We didn't like we just put out the record and we hadn't gone for ads or anything yet. Like we, you know, the song was just out online, you know, over the internet. And I remember just like we went to this food spot and I went in the car and one of the dudes from the label, like he's chilling, whatever. And the song is playing. And I'm and he knows his playing. He already like he probably already freaked out in the car before me. You know what I mean? Because he got his grabbing, composure before he, he came back. He's cool. <laughs> he's trying to act cool, whatever. So I'm looking at him like, like why are you playing a song like off a CD? Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's weird because you know we all know the record. Like we all. Mm -hmm. you know? But um, but he's kind of like he just pointing at the radio like yo, and you know what I mean? I'm looking at the radio. I'm seeing it's, you know 99 jams. Like you know what I mean? And and right when I'm looking at it. Um, the DJ who was spinning this started like introducing me as a new artist. Blah, blah, blah. It was crazy, man. Like I remember trying to get my phone to film it. You know what I mean? Trying to ID it, whatever. And yo, it was it was a crazy feeling, man. It seems like if there's ever a moment where you automatically forget how to use all your devices, it's yeah. that moment. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, you know, man. whether it be trying to catch your song on the radio for the first time, or like that first time your son is about to make it like a dope shot in basketball. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, you're fumbling, and you're you can't get on. You drop it, and you miss the whole thing. Like I mean, actually, I remember I actually got it on camera, right? And right when I was about to put it up, Instagram crashed, and the video was gone. And I was pissed. Look at the devil. I was trying to flex on IG about, you know, my song being on the radio. And, and you know, it didn't happen. But and I at least heard it, so. And, you, and I'm saying, and, and that was the first of many yeah. times, man. Like, I mean, that song's getting a lot of burn. Like, so when did it initially drop? Uh, we put the song out, like, end of July. That's okay. when, like, when we released it online. We just put it out on SoundCloud. And um, we started doing a promo tour, like, end of August. And that's where really like things started just moving. I feel like us traveling, going to different stations, different markets, like really made it connect. You know what I mean? Like that made people really like jump on it because we used to come out and perform and stuff. You know what I mean? In different stations and stuff. You know? So when you're working on a record like that yeah. or like the other joint, Forever, yeah. which you know seems like is it could be the front runner to be like the official wedding song. Yeah. For like young, you know, for like young for cats, sure. cause like yeah. you know, your, our, our parents and our parents' parents, they had like Stevie Wonder right. and you know, cats like that. Yeah, like yeah. forever is like that new energy, like, man. So like, when you're thinking about writing a song like that, like, what's your motivation? Like, who you thinking about or who you picture in mind? I mean, everything comes from a, you know, my own experiences. You know what I mean? Life experiences. Um, even last night, you know, uh, forever to me was just like a honest record. It, it's about my whole move from coming from Sweden and moving over to the States because that's actually a story like I had to kind of leave my girl you know what I'm saying she was like my first love so you know it was you know we was together for four years so it was really crazy making that move you know because I wanted to do music that was my dream and but at the same time like I was kind of stuck in between and it was really hard you know what I mean like, yeah really, like tough period so um that song when we started making that song it just made sense to be about you know what I'm saying that time period for me and also like that music is like what i miss hearing right now you know you know just it's out tough. there you know what i'm saying like i i just miss that style like that soulful traditional type of r&b you know 
Yeah, people come up to me all the time, like you know, like you know, R and B artists. Like, yeah. Yo, how do I get my record on? And it's just like, yeah. it. You, I never really have an answer for them because right. it seems like hip hop is so dominant mm-hmm. on radio. Like you know, yeah. what I'm saying like you know, you could spin a hip hop record in a strip club. Right. R and B records are kind of hit and miss because like you know, like chicks trying to twerk and do a little certain certain yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. you know, for the record. So it seems like it's harder for guys to break in to do what you do. Like if you had any um. Like words of advice. I mean, it seems like there is no real pattern to getting it done. But what do That's you recommend? True. Man, honestly, like, I just recommend just putting it out. You know what I mean? Online. When we put out Forever, like I didn't know Forever was going to come out this early. I, I planned it out. You know, the same thing. You know, like I figured I had to put out more records I could work, you know, in different places. You know what I'm saying? Like radio and stuff. But, um, you know, the record actually got leaked. But then love and hip-hop reached out and they wanted to use it for you know for the um for that scene you yeah know, with joe button post and stuff and that to me i was like man that's you know that's dope because you know that's gonna bring the record to life like you know it's gonna give it a, a purpose like a you know actual you know what i'm saying yeah scene for it. so when 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 it got aired we just made sense to put it out and we just let it just ride we just let the people you know rock with it you know shared it and, and it really did great so um i never really said you know I'm trying to get this record on radio and we need to, you know what I'm saying? I just love the record and I wanted to put it out there for the people. So I feel like for anybody doing R&B or, you know, music, soulful music or whatever, you know, I think the best way is just to put it out, uh, let the people rock with it and you never know where it's going to take you. you know? Now you can't believe that you did it with me. Oh, you was the same yeah, uh, last Stay night. real with it. What they talking about? Ain't no rapper that's alive, call for Lauren now. Now can you deal with it? I probably run you out, cause I never tell